Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888 and we've got a pretty interesting departure from the normal video you probably expect to see from us. We do a lot of the top five guns videos which are extremely popular. Um, we've been doing those for quite a long time and a lot of you guys love them and we're going to do plenty more of them, don't worry. But we thought that with all the new gun owners that are out there now, we would do a top 10 reasons to be a gun owner because I think a lot of people might have friends uh, in their various circles and everything that they might be on the fence about being a gun owner. Maybe they're not sure why they need to bother owning a firearm or maybe maybe some people just don't understand. So what this video is meant to be is one of those videos that you can drop in somebody's email box and send it to them as kind of a subtle hint like, hey, check this video out. Give it a minute. Hear these guys out. See what they have to say about firearms ownership. And maybe somebody who's on the fence about being a gun owner might go, wow, you know what? I never really considered that. Maybe I will go buy a hunting rifle or or whatever. So we've already done um, videos previously on different categories that guns fall into. That's what the five gun series is about. We originally started that series. Uh, we're the original people that did that, that concept. And the reason we started that concept was to show people firearms that would fall into a certain specific, uh, you know, reasoning or certain category. Okay. That's not really what this video is about. We're just going to talk about, uh, I've got a little cheat sheet here, so bear with me. We're going to talk about reasons somebody would want to be a gun owner, and then we're going to kind of elaborate on those things. And we always have a wild card. So number one reason, and these are not in any kind of specific order. Um, I just kind of brainstormed these out. Uh, so they're not in order of importance, but they're all equally important. They certainly are. All right. So what's number one, Chad? Well, it is your right and duty to own firearms. So I think that's pretty cut and dry. We live in a society where you know we have certain amendments that are guaranteed to a certain rights that are pretty much inalienable, and the Second Amendment is one of those inalienable rights, the rights to bear arms. And uh, that doesn't just mean go out and kill Bambi, okay, to put it in your freezer. That means to defend yourself, your family, your community, even your country against enemies foreign and domestic. Uh, defending your, uh, your state or your country against a tyrannical government who is uh, overreaching. Sure. Um, things like that, but a lot of people don't realize that, you know, the true meaning of the Second Amendment. There's always been debate about it and whatnot, and you know, we got a lot of fuds out there who think that, oh well, we don't need any of these old tactical guns, these black rifles, and all this kind of stuff, all these assault weapons. All we need is just hunting rifles and shotguns, sport sporting guns. They're missing the point. They're missing the point completely. They are missing you know, the point. I mean, the Second Amendment is all guns encompasses all guns, not just sporting firearms. I mean, right. there's sporting purpose, sure. Okay, but then there's firearms that are meant for other things as well. So, I, I think that there's definitely something to be had from that. I mean, I can't tell you how many people that are in the FUD category. In case you guys don't know, a FUD is somebody who supports only what they feel is a hunting rifle or something. Like, they only support a sporting purpose firearm, like an over and under shotgun or a bolt action rifle. Like, they, they don't think that, you know, modern firearms like an AR or MP5 or like I have here. Are, are useful. So really, that's scary. It is. Because on one end, you know, yeah, they can consider themselves pro-gun for some reason, but but can they? I mean, Somebody that's a FUD is not necessarily pro-gun. To me, if you can't support all firearms ownership, then you can't support any of it. Right. It, it's all or nothing. And it, the, you know. The thing is that, you know, these, these people, they also say, okay, well, I don't mind if you ban this type of firearm, but see, the thing is, you know, you, you get one little foot in and then they're going to take everything. You, you know, give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. That's true. So in light of that, all right, so it's your, it's, your right, it's your right and duty to own firearms. That's a pretty dang good reason right in itself. Even if I don't read anything else off this list, you should understand we're going to go to number two. All right, and this is, this is what, you know, brave men and women have died to protect your right to bear arms. Guys, think about all the men and women that have died and fought for our country that to protect your right to be a firearms owner, to protect your rights of free speech. I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the reasons that, that we've fought wars in recent years and everything like that, but think about, think about Grandpappy that died in World War II or somebody like that. I mean, you know, those people, they all deserve respect, but also, I mean, they, they all fought for what they believed was, was defending our rights in well, one way or the other. Know, back in World War II, I mean, you know, Germany was a power that was trying to, <laughs> basically, they were trying to overthrow the entire world. Yep. You know, and we had the Allied powers, the Axis powers. I mean, it was truly a world war. But and I thought uh, that was important to throw in there. I, oh, yeah. I know that that one speaks for itself, guys. I don't have to get on too many, 
you know, tangents there, but um, I, I have a lot of respect for my police, military guys, and all you people out there that are veterans. I respect all of you uh, because it takes a lot to it takes a lot to bear that to bear that uh, responsibility. You know, that responsibility you know? exactly. So that's a good reason right there. All right. So number three, we're getting on to a little bit more tangible reasons. Um, of course, those reasons are very important. But um, let's see. Okay. So firearms provide a means to hunt for food. Okay. All right. So well. All right, starting out, you know, I mean, we hunted food with rocks and sticks and spears and such as that. And then as technology increased, we started getting into firearms, you know, black powder arms, sure. such as that. I mean, you had the bow and arrow and such before that, all, all kinds of different implements. Yep. But then one, once black powder was developed, you know, that started the firearms revolution. And it provided a means to hunt game at longer ranges sure. or, you know, put them down more effectively, such more as humanely. that. Oh, more humanely as yep. well. But, you know, a firearm provides uh, a family who is maybe living, say, back in the uh, back in the early days of the country here, a means to go out and hunt for food that they needed to survive. When the Second know? Amendment was originally conceived, and and really when the Constitution, our founding fathers originally were over here, and when that all was originally conceived, um, you know, being on the frontier was a normal way of life, it was. and you know, you didn't have a Walmart around every corner, you didn't have a, a hospital, you know close to you. Mm -hmm. If you were lucky, you could get looked at by somebody probably within the week, mm -hmm. but you had to rely on yourself and those in your household to hunt for food, to, to go fishing, catch fish, to you know make sure you have clean water to drink, make sure you can stay warm in the winter. All of these things, these self-sufficiencies that we take for granted were all afforded to us early on because of firearms. Do you not think that if we didn't come over over here armed and able to defend ourselves originally, that the natives wouldn't have just you know strung us up from every single tree if we couldn't defend ourselves? So, you well, know, the whole hunting for food thing, I can understand the, the fuds of the group going, oh, well, I only hunt. That's okay. If all you do is hunt and if someone comes in your front door, you're not gonna shoot them, that's, that's on you, okay? If, if, if you're getting robbed or someone's trying to rape your wife or kill your family, if, you, if you're gonna be that tied to your political views that, oh, well, I don't believe in black rifles, I guarantee you, you'll grab that over and under and put a slug in it hmm. and, and, and shoot somebody who's trying to hurt you. When you think about like hunting in the traditional sense, I mean, today, obviously, you don't need to hunt, I mean, to, to survive. You just right. go down to the store and you buy all your groceries or whatnot, but right. some people still enjoy hunting as a means of basically, you know, nostalgic purposes or tying themselves to the past or just sure. keeping with traditional values and whatnot. Or, you know, you might like filling your freezer up with, with deer that way you don't have to worry about getting processed meat and such, yes. you know, because it's all natural. You know, everything we, you we eat a lot all, of deer meat for that reason. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I eat a lot of venison. But, um, but anyways, I mean, people like to uphold yeah. those traditional values. Oh, yeah, know, so. and it's also a great way to, we're going to get to this later, but it's also a great way to bond with our youth. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to get young people outside, away from the dang Xbox, mm -hmm. and get them outside doing fun stuff and enjoying firearms. Something I just thought of, but, you know, what's sure. crazy is some of these young kids nowadays, they don't realize where the chicken in the package comes from or the beef in the package comes right. from. They they don't have any idea that that, 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 chick, kill it. that, that <laughs> chicken tender that they bought at Shane's Rib Shack or whatever came from a real chicken, a real live chicken from a chicken farm <laughs> and, the, and the entire process. Well, it ain't live anymore, that. but yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just saying, yeah. it's just, it's crazy. I've literally heard kids that don't know where the food comes from. They oh, I just go to the store and get it. No, not yeah. quite. <laughs> so I, I think that that's a very important reason to oh, be a yeah. gun owner. I mean, if let's just say if the crap hits the fan, something bad goes on, oh, exactly. you've got a way. If we have to revert back to a very simple way of life, let's say that there's no phones, there's no internet, the power's out, uh, there's no refrigeration. You've got to know how to make mm -hmm. fire, how to get clean water, how, mm -hmm. to, how to dress out a rabbit or a squirrel or a deer and eat it and consume it. I mean, Store it. all, all I mean. of those things are very important and that's an important reason to be a gun owner. Mm -hmm. Maybe not quite as pertinent in today's society, but no. it is important for our heritage as American citizens. So let's see, we've got, all right, firearms provide protection from enemies, foreign and domestic. Mm -hmm. So Chad mentioned that earlier in the video, but gosh, people mean protection. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, an extremely important reason to be a gun owner is to be able to defend yourself. Well, not only at home, okay, like say you've got a, a handgun by the bedside or whatever, okay, you keep this for home defense, all right? You throw a flashlight on that thing and you got yourself a viable home defense method if there's a bump in the night. Sure. Okay, well, if you're out and about, then you 
use your concealed carry piece, all right? This is a little Glock 43 that I carry all the time for the most part, um, but you have a means to defend yourself while you're out and about, and if you're with your family or friends or whatnot, you have a way to defend yourself and them or other people in your community if somebody is being an idiot. But then you have life and liberty guns. You know, these rifles right here, this is kind of the defend your self, your community, your country, your state, whatever. That's from, to protect your castle. This is to protect your castle. Or, you know, if uh, the crap really hits the fan hard, you know, this kind of rifle is the type you can go to war with. I mean, this is what you can bet your life on is a, is a black rifle. The thing is, you too, know? and what I look at with defense, there's a lot of people that I run into on a regular basis in my travels that say, well, I want to be a gun owner, but I don't want to hurt anybody. Well, well, look, nobody wants to hurt anybody, okay? I don't want to hurt anybody, but if someone forces you into that corner and, and that flight or fight reflex comes into play, you have to do what you have to do to survive yeah. as a person. And believe me, the people that come in the night are going to have guns, and they're going to have lots of them, and they're going to be black, and they're going to shoot fast. And the bottom line is, you know, if something like that happens, if some guy who's an unsavory person comes and tries to take you in the night, which is probably very unlikely, um, but it's, it's good to know that you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the people that would do you harm with the mm -hmm. equal technology they have. I, I am a big proponent for us having the same firepower as the military. Now, granted, we don't need to be running around with law rockets or artillery pieces. Actually, I'd like to have artillery piece. I'd love to have a few hand but, grenades laying around. That but sort of the thing. thing is, you know, <laughs> uh, in terms of small arms technology, mm -hmm. there's no reason why this MP5 can't be full auto. It's not. It's semi-auto, but it does have a short barrel, a suppressor. And guys, I've got 400 bucks in tax stamps tied up in this dang gun just to have it in this configuration. And it's not even select fire. It's semi-auto. Mm -hmm. It's got the short barrel, the K configuration. This is a Zenith uh, Z5P. And we've got a Griffin, which suppressor is that? That's the Revolution. Uh, that's my Revolution 45. Yep. So. so something like that, I mean, and that's got a T2 on it, great mm -hmm. little optic. That's great for personal defense. So... That's a pretty dang good reason well, right remember, there. Well, remember, you and Barry did a video forever ago about kind of like the, the shooter's mindset or like self-defense yeah. mindset. You know, if, yeah. you, if you buy a gun with the, you know, the, the premise of defending yourself or your home or whatnot, but you can't get around harming somebody, I mean, if someone's trying to do you harm, then you, you, you have to be in the mindset to do what you have to do. Yes. I mean, it's either, you know, two, two guys breaking your house or whatever, and your wife and three kids are there, and, and there's no telling what they want to do. They come armed to the teeth or whatever. You or, don't give them that opportunity. You know, I mean, you, you have to get yourself in the mindset that if that situation ever arose, that you would be able to do something yep. about it. That's part of being a head of household, is defending your castle. I mean, that's just the bottom line, guys. All right, now, Chad actually already inadvertently uh, hit on this, but I'm going to go ahead and go anyway. Owning firearms such as handguns allow you to carry a firearm on your person every day. Yep. Um, that's important. Um, Barry and I, back in the day, we did a video called Consistent Carry. Mm. And one of the things that we talked about in that video, you might look it up, are that carry the same way all the time mm -hmm. and carry. Carry in any way you can that will make you carry every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that everyday carry is a big part of that particular bullet point here, mm -hmm. being a gun owner. It's okay to have a nice vault full of, uh, you know, fancy Pedersoli black powder rifles and a bunch of random, I don't know, what, Remington over and, I don't know, whatever the FUDs buy, all the fancy over and unders <laughs> and fancy bolt actions. Old H&H double barrels. Old H&H you know, double, H &H double barrels and German drillings. LC all those Smith guns are doubles. great. Don't get me wrong, they're awesome. But if that guy don't own a handgun and doesn't carry in public and then let's say something happens, well, what good is it being a gun owner if you don't carry a gun on you? Yep. You know, now we're going to talk about some of the cruxes of that, some of the things that, that the responsibilities. Now, just like there's pros, there's also relative cons. Now, I'd like mm -hmm. to think that there's less cons to the pros, but in light of that, carrying a gun on your person every day entails a certain amount of responsibility that a you have lot, to be capable of. of. I mean, you, you've, got to, you've got to know when to shoot, when not to shoot. You've got to know when it's an appropriate situation to draw a gun or not mm -hmm. draw a gun. You got to know places you carry, uh, you can carry and can't carry. Uh, all of these certain things are part of the responsibility of being a gun owner is abiding by the, the rules and laws that are set forward. Now, mm -hmm. rules, laws, all these things, laws are set up for a reason. It's because probably some dummy did something dumb and they go, well, we got to make a law to prevent this from happening again. So, usually, laws 
are set out and, and put out to the lowest common denominator of society. The lowest <laughs> common denominator of society is what determines something that becomes a law because they have to protect you from yourself. It's almost like those uh, erroneous safety warnings on everything. I mean, you see safety warnings and all kinds of stuff like, who would do that, Will? Somebody probably did. Somebody did, <laughs> exactly. So. But, That's something know, to think about. Well, you mentioned like knowing the laws and whatnot around as far as carry goes. You know, there there are people out there like U.S. Law Shield that will basically defend you in the case of like a self-defense scenario. I mean, if you have to draw your gun on somebody and someone's threatening your life and you shoot them, yep. or even if you brandish your firearm, you know, some yep. places you can be arrested for brandishing your firearm. Yep. I mean, if you defend yourself in your home, there's a lot of times if if the assailant survives, you could be sued. And you could be criminally liable for for the damages that they that they uh, ensued. You know, I, I would strongly recommend anyone who carries a gun on a regular basis to look at U.S. Law Shield oh, yeah. because I'm a member, Chad's a member, my whole family are members, and they're a great bunch of people. And I've actually had to use their services before. Mm -hmm. We're not, excuse me, we're not going to get off on that right now because we want to we want to <laughs> kind of keep this rolling. Uh, I try not to make these videos terribly long, but of course we always end up. We driving. always say that. That's okay. All right. So number six. Mm -hmm. Firearms represent a considerable investment that will only increase in value. So guys, mm -hmm. firearms are valuable, okay? They cost a lot of money when you buy them. Sometimes you get a good deal, but mm -hmm. for the most part, a firearm that you pay X amount of dollars for now, in theory, as long as you didn't get upside down in it when you bought it, mm -hmm. will stay that much or increase as time mm -hmm. goes on. Now, I mean, modern guns, not so much. I mean, a lot of people like nowadays, they'll buy, say, say you buy a new handgun, all right? Well, you're not happy with it, all right, a month later. So you sell it, but nobody's going to pay full price for a used gun. So you're going to sell it for a reduced price. So that person's going to get a good deal on it. And then if they want to resell it, then they can maybe recoup a little bit of their investment if they got in it for a good price. Correct. Or, you know, like somebody's hurting for money and you buy a gun. Yeah. But, yep. you know, investment grade firearms or collectible firearms and whatnot, I mean, think about like the price on SKSs back in the 80s. I mean, you can get SKSs yeah. for $39, 49 bucks. Yeah. You know, even back in the 90s, they were 60 bucks, 70 bucks. Right. Now they're 400. Right. So they're only ever going to increase in value, especially as everything is bought up on the market. And then every, it, these type of firearms get increasingly more rare. Yeah. You know, I mean, so. here's a good example. I've got a uh, Snyder Enfield here. Oh, yeah. It's a uh, Portuguese contract, cavalry carbine. Mm -hmm. And this particular gun, they only made 1,200 of. Mm -hmm. So they're not making them anymore, and they're not going to make them ever again. I mean, that's it. The amount of these guns is finite. There's only so many of them on planet Earth, and I've got one of them. Yep. You know, I, in theory, uh, you know, 1,199 other people have this gun on planet Earth, and that's well, it. Like, you picked that up in Vegas, and I bought an old uh, Remington autoloader rifle, like a pre-model 8 that was in really nice shape. And, uh, you know, those type of firearms, they're just, they're, they're classic. You know, they, they hold a certain appeal, and over time, I'm not planning on selling it, so over time, that firearm will theoretically increase in value. Yep. I mean. So, guns are a good investment. I, I think that's one of the, and, and guns are an investment. Oh, yeah. See, there's a difference, okay? Well, if, if I if I buy a gun with the intentions of reselling it for a profit or something like that down the road, like say I'm buying it as an investment, that's one thing. Like if I, if I speculated on the price of this gun and mm -hmm. I thought, well, a year from now, I might flip it and double my money. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one thing. But firearms are an investment in general. Mm -hmm. So let's say I go and I buy a Glock 17 or Glock 19 or M&P or whatever, and mm -hmm. I pay full price for it. I have now invested in my life. If I'm carrying a gun on my person every day and I paid full price for the gun, at that point, it doesn't matter what I paid for the mm -hmm. gun because the only good gun is the one that's on your person when you need it. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it doesn't matter what the gun's worth. You've got a gun. You are armed. You can defend yourself. And that's the whole premise of this bullet yeah, point. I mean, what kind of a price could you put on that, you know? Exactly. All right, so that was number six. Number seven, uh, let's see. Firearms represent an excellent trading item, even if the items being traded for aren't firearms. Yeah, I mean, firearms do provide a uh, good means of bartering. You know? I'll tell you what. So. I can't tell you how many cool things that I have traded into using a gun for trading value. Sometimes if I'm out and about and let's say that um for whatever this is of certainly not the case, but let's say this this infield right here, the Snyder. Say that I bought two of them mm -hmm. and one of them was maybe a little bit nicer condition and the other one's a little bit rougher. Mm -hmm. 
maybe the rougher one I could keep as trading stock. If the prices on the guns were very fair and comparable, you could buy both guns and keep one for mm -hmm. trading stock. Certainly could. That's I mean, typically hey, what I do. I bought a bunch of mill certs from uh, one particular individual, and uh, you know, I bought kind of his seconds, his shooters, and he's kept his nicer guns in his collection. And that's the whole idea. You know, you buy one to shoot for a while, and you find one that's a little bit better shape. You know, like an old. Uh, you know, number four Mark II infield or something like that. You buy sure. a nicer one with matching bayonet, matching scabbard or something, yep. and then you sell the other one and you keep the nice one. All right, so, so, so that can also be a means to up, upgrade you as you go, or mm -hmm. it can also be a means, more specifically in the context of this particular mm -hmm. bullet point, to trade for things that aren't guns. Yep. If a guy's got a cool guitar for sale, or he's got an awesome amplifier, a motorcycle, I mean, a lot of times, you know, if you're watching this video and, and you have done this before, <laughs> guys love guns. Yep. I love guns and, and I'm very tempted to trade some and, and to lose on a trade if I'm trading something that's not a gun for something that is a gun. Yep. I know that sounds crazy, but people attach a certain value to guns which can't be matched by any other commodity. Well, think about this too, like it, in a crap hits the fan situation. I mean, if yep. you've got a ton of different guns, say you've got a rack of 20 ARs laying around that you've just kind of built up over the years or whatever, you've bought receivers and you built them out just sure. to have a bunch of you know, stock if you're like a prepper. Yep. All right, well, you can trade those firearms for medical supplies, food, uh, ammunition, or what, whatever. I mean, they could be a very good bartering. Yep. Uh, you it know, could be. Coin you, in that you would sort of certainly situation. have to be careful there, though. I you mean, would. in that situation, you don't want to, if somebody's but, coming to you in a, in a situation of weakness, you may not want to consider like arming them, you know, no, but, but you I know, know what you're saying. I mean, people think about that kind of stuff, so. But yeah, I mean, that's certainly, you know, a, a, an excellent observation. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move along here. Uh, number eight. Owning historically significant firearms honors military heritage, not only for the U.S., but for all military mm -hmm. personnel abroad. Yep. I have to say that's probably one of the most intriguing things about gun ownership to me is I, I love owning historical firearms. Mm -hmm. And I try to not look at the conflict they were involved in. I try not to look at uh, any other factor other than I like the, the technology that the firearm employs. Mm -hmm. And it's also a way to put yourself in the shoes of the people that use that firearm before you. I mean, think about it. I've got a Swedish Mauser right over there. Upstairs uh, in my bedroom, I've got a photo of a Swedish stock makers outside of their little shack mm -hmm. uh, in Sweden. And they're all got you know various projects in their hands that they're working on. The men that made those stocks are gone. They're all gone. They're all dead. They've all passed. Okay, But think, those men that made that stock are gone. So that's it. There's there's only so many Swedish Mausers that will ever exist, and it's a way to to kind of, you know, make their work more apparent and make it more well known. I mean, that's why we do videos on military surplus rifles like we do. Like some guy will go, "Well, Eric, why are you wearing British camo? Why are you wearing Czech camo? Why are you wearing German camo? Are you some kind of Nazi or something?" Well, well, no, no. The thing is, if I'm shooting a German rifle, I'm going to wear a German field coat. Because that's just one more way I can kind of give a shout out to our German viewers. I mean, we have viewers all over the world. Do you think I'm going to be some white trash hillbilly just wearing a, you know, a regular like army field jacket all the time that I got you know, like from a U.S. surplus store? No, I like wearing everybody's stuff because it, it's it's paying things forward. It's honoring the heritage of not only our troops and and everything we do. But honoring the struggles that troops have to go through all across the world, and pay homage, you know, you know that's that's a big part of it for me. That's mm -hmm. why I own so many military rifles because you can kind of put yourself in some small shape, way, shape, or form into the shoes of an infantry guy who might have had to use that gun. I mean, <laughs> a lot of these firearms have been used before. Oh God, and, yeah. You know, I'm a former infantry guy, so for me, you know, I like the idea of knowing that some of these guns might have slung some lead at a bad guy and might have, that guy might have well, saved hell, himself. Think about the Gehinder that we've been loading for the past few days. I mean, you know, we were looking at that, uh, that bayonet and it's like, man, that, those could be blood stains on there. I mean, there's, there's a good chance that this rifle could have been used in battle and killed several people. I mean, you just yep. don't know. I mean, we can only speculate, but yep. I mean, uh, you know, we'd like to think that most of the guns that we own have some sort of military significance. You, in know, that part, th you know, there's there's a mystique about it too. I there think is. I think um, you know, owning collectible firearms, there's definitely mystique associated with that, and that to me is why mm -hmm. I felt that was a very important reason to be a gun owner. Let's say you're not into hunting, you don't like killing Bambi. Okay, well, you may not be concerned about self defense. Okay, fine, buy an old uh, uh, muzzle loader or front stuffer, mm -hmm. or buy a 
buy a cool old cap and ball revolver yeah. or a, a old mill serp and just go have fun yeah. at the range. It doesn't have to just be military rifles. Some people just love like old cowboy guns. You know, some people yeah. are just very ardent collectors of cowboy action style guns and whatnot. But yep. you know, we're just big military guys. Uh, yeah, so. me too. All right, so number nine. Firearms provide a way for families to bond with their children mm -hmm. and teach important responsibilities to the up and coming generations. No doubt. That's probably one of the most important um, bullet points on this list. Yep. If we don't continuously preach, practice what we preach and preach to our kids about, you know, uh, <laughs> the importance of firearms ownership, you know, you definitely don't want the mainstream media or, or the schools, schools yeah. the liberal schools to tell them what firearms ownership is about. Because if you trust them to do it, they're, they're going to turn them into a bunch of millennials. <laughs> you know, if these, not these, already. You these know. new generations, I'm telling you, they got some really weird views. They certainly do. But, I mean, starting, starting off your kids, I mean, I, I've got a five-year-old, you know, and I actually just took him out shooting for the very first time. And I decided to start him shooting on a little handgun. So he got to shoot my MP22 compact suppressed for his first firearm like in we, my yard in, in Eric's <laughs> yard I'm like god I started shooting a pellet gun at 10 cans and here here we go I mean my son's shooting a 22 compact you know you know I think that that says a lot <laughs> that definitely says a lot I mean think about when we were coming up think about the first dad or the first gun that your dad took you out to shoot oh god yeah and I mean, then, I, you know. I bug my dad all the time, go out and shoot like Model 66, you know, 357. Okay, I shot that a lot. I mean, the the Browning, uh, I get a little Browning lever rifle, you know, a little 22. Yeah. Um, I begged him and begged him to let me shoot his 12 gauge. And like, okay, just point it up in the air. Well, it put me on my ass. Yep. You know, I mean, when I was like nine years old. Yep. But, I mean, stuff like this, like guns with suppressors, you know, a lot of people just have this innate fear of suppressors because oh Hollywood and all this mess they used in clandestine operations all this no this made it so easy to teach my son how to shoot this firearm because yep. we didn't have to wear hearing protection it's nice and quiet it reduces recoil it balances the gun out real well mm -hmm. and he enjoyed this so much it's not even funny and yep. two you know hearing protection a lot won't even fit over a you know a small head a young person's head so it's not going to provide that level of protection anyways yep. so I will continue to use this you know, to teach my children how to shoot. And my daughter is coming up too, and she's going to be a little terror on the range. I, I don't doubt it. <laughs> I don't doubt it. But that's an excellent reason. I mean, that things like that are a perfect example of how, you know, people can bond with their families through oh, yeah. firearms ownership. And there, there's, there's no thing that is going to be a detriment to you being a gun owner. If, if you're brought up shooting guns from a young age and then one day you you become a gun owner even if all you do is own uh, like a couple of handguns a shotgun maybe a few hunting rifles you still have one leg up over someone who's going to try to kill you or do something bad against you you do and uh it's well, just it's a no-brainer and taking your kids out to the range and whatnot or taking them out to shoot gets them outside of the house and like eric mentioned earlier gets them off of the xbox and out from in front of the tv and whatnot yep. and teaching them some good solid values i mean yeah. What are they going to learn from the television? I mean, come on. Give me Don't a get me wrong now. I love some video games, but that's a few and far between compared yeah. to the time I spend outside. Oh, God, yeah. All right, so number nine. Number Wait nine. a minute. Oh, wait, number uh, ten. Number ten. Yep, number ten. All right, being a firearms owner makes you a harder target for theft, murder, and rape. It also gives you the tools necessary to protect those around you. Yep. We that, already kind of like bounced around on that a little bit. But we'll elaborate a little well, bit. Well, there is no doubt, and you can just you can look up the statistics. You can read about all the facts that are out there on it. States with better um, better numbers of firearms owners, and whatnot, have statistically less crime, and especially in the inner inner cities, municipalities, and such, where there is a uh, higher percentage of gun owners. Criminals don't want to take that risk that they're going to get killed trying to go in and rob somebody in broad daylight or in yep. the middle of the night or something like that, knowing that they might have a gun. You know, yep. it is a definite fact. Criminals live on borrowed time and they know it. Oh yeah. Someone who's a thief, I've been a victim of thievery before, it is a horrible feeling. However, Same here. I mean, however, have... the thing is, you know, thieves are living on borrowed time and they know it. They know that if you own a gun and they have a reason to think you own a gun, that if they kick in your door, you're gonna hit them with number four buckshot, center mass, and go back to bed. Maybe not quite that starkly, no, but, but but they know that their days are numbered. Mm. And that's why they concentrate on these areas with strict gun laws, because they know that the statistical probability of someone being a gun owner that they kick that door in on is less well, than if they come to a perfect place. Perfect example. You know, I mean, think about the think about the gun ownership rate in a place like Chicago. All right, all the gang activity, all the crime, the yep. murder rates. I mean, 
Chicago has got it bad, but they have some they of the put most, themselves in that. In I mean, that. they have some of the most fervent anti-gun policies in the entire country. Yep. You no know, one wants to live there except the criminals. I mean, it, it's a criminal paradise. It really is because you think, oh, well, I'm just going to go go down this line of apartments here because I know none of these people are armed because this apartment has a policy, a no guns policy. Yeah. Or I mean, think about the no gun or uh, gun free zones and such. How all the uh, you know, all these mass shootings stuff happen mm -hmm. in gun-free zones, schools such as that. I mean, come on. I think that you'll find that with the mindset of being someone who carries a gun every day, the other crux of number 10 is that, okay, well, it also gives you the tools necessary to protect those around you. Well, mm -hmm. you may not necessarily think, oh, well, if someone were in trouble, I'm going to risk my life to help a perfect stranger. But I think that you would generally find that, that most gun owners... If they have a way that they can help and they know they can help without they're getting in the help. way, they're going to. Uh, that's just the bottom line. The media would have a lot of you folks believe that gun owners are a bunch of crazies, uber-Christian, conservative, Bible Belt, right wing extremists, terrorists. That's just not the case. The majority of people that own firearms in the United States are very, very level-headed. Uh, they just want to, you know, further... Their society they live in, they want to be responsible, contributing members of the society that they're in. They want to protect the people around them. Um, and I honestly think that most people that carry a gun have that mindset. They're not just gonna, they're not just gonna lay down and die. Mm -hmm. They're they're gonna they're gonna help the people around them in any way they can. Mm -hmm. And I think that speaks highly of the modern gun owner in the U.S. because there is a very big resurgence of everyday carry. This whole concealed carry movement, even open carry. I'm not a big open carry advocate. However, um, you know it does have its place in certain certain instances. But people carrying on a regular basis, I believe, is is definitely becoming more and more of a norm than oh, what it is. used to be. I mean, carry permits have gone up exponentially in the past few years. I mean, firearms ownership has as well. Yeah, and not that's only the reason we're making this video. Yeah, not only firearms ownership, but also. NFA items as well. I mean, we've yeah. seen a record surge in the amount of like suppressors or short barrel shotguns, short barrel rifles that people yeah. have been filing for and whatnot. And see, you have to, people don't realize it, but you have to go through a very, very detailed process to obtain those firearms. I mean, yeah. if you don't dot all your I's, cross all your T's, I mean, yeah, and yeah, there is no gun stuff. show loophole. I don't want to get on that. But no, there, we're, that's, that's another uh, topic for another the, day. The reason that we're, we're laying these things out in the terms that we are is because we're trying to keep it very elementary and very simple for someone who may not be a gun person. That's why we're making this video. Mm -hmm. Some of you guys are like, well, well, duh, 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 each time we, we say something. But the thing is, this isn't for the person who is a big time, you know, full gun owner like we are that, that's very well versed. This is for someone who is confused. Maybe they're a little bit afraid about buying a gun. Maybe they don't mm -hmm. understand the things that go along with it. So we felt this video would be important mm -hmm. um, to kind of put some of those things out there for people that just may not know. I mean, it's kind of, I guess, dare I say, a public service announcement. But Well, it kind of is. I mean, you know, people people who are looking to get into firearms, whatnot, they're going to go out there and they're going to look for information they on... Are. You know, in, in books, magazines, online, and, and YouTube is a big, big place to find information. I mean, albeit good and bad information, but... I'd like try to think to, somewhat we, good. <laughs> we try to put this stuff out there for the folks who are just looking around, and yeah, yeah. they say, oh man, well this is exactly what I'm looking for, let me listen yep. to this. And All right, so number 11, wild card. Wild card. We, yeah, we have a wild card in every top five <laughs> or top ten. Shooting guns is fun and great stress relief. Oh, good God. So... You know, I, I chose that as number 11 because I wanted to touch on the reasons that I felt were more serious first that really, really drove the point home. Mm. But guys, at the end of the day, firearms are just plain fun to shoot. Yep. Even if you just take a 22 and go out in the yard, have a little fun, shoot some tin cans or whatever, mm -hmm. they're just awesome fun and it's great stress relief. If you've had a long uh, day and it's been a hard day at the office and things just don't seem like they're going right that day, Go grab your shotgun, go out to the skeet range, shoot skeet. Mm -hmm. Or go shoot some tin cans with your twenty two. Yeah, or stop after work by the indoor range. You know, you got your carry piece on you and your truck yep. or whatever. Just stop by the range, get some ammo, and just blow a little steam off, you know? Yep. I mean, a, a whole nother kind of area of that, and I don't want to get off on too many tangents, but reloading. Uh, oh, you know, we re reload a lot of our own ammunition, and for me, reloading is very therapeutic. So you're taking, mm -hmm. you know, a, a basic piece of brass and turning it into a cartridge, something mm -hmm. that winds up being something that you can shoot out of your firearm, and you made it. And there's part of that process. It's the whole process of making the ammo, going out to the range, shooting, having mm -hmm. fun. Oh, why is this not accurate? Why is this doing this? Diagnosing the problem. Coming back, 
cleaning the gun, you know, tumbling the brass. It's all a process. It is. I mean, it keeps us busy too. I mean, like, you know, Eric's been loading ammo for the Martinis as well as like the Snyder. And, you know, it's very fulfilling when you can make a 130 year old rifle talk again. Yep. I mean, because nobody's making ammo for that stuff or very few people are, and it's prohibitively yeah. expensive. You got so that right. <laughs> when you can roll it yourself, you get a, a sense of fulfillment and, you know, just like you have accomplished something that very few people would actually take the time and resources to do. I, I agree. Um, we actually are going to be doing a video on this uh, Snyder before long. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of interesting, you know, projects on the way with uh, military surplus mm -hmm. rifles and things of, of that nature, as well as uh, pretty much everything you see on this mm -hmm. table. There's always going to be something we have going on. Oh, yeah. But that's why with our channel, we try to embrace everything from modern firearms, vintage specimens, antiques, uh, we try to show gunsmithing, reloading. Yeah. That's why our channel is set up the way it is, is because we want to provide all this information and put it out there for people so they can kind of understand, uh, you know, the, the big scheme of what makes gun owners tick. I would right. like to think that our channel is representative of someone who's kind of a full-fledged gun owner mm -hmm. in the U.S. And that's I would say that our channel is more representative of the full-fledged gun enthusiast. I mean, because you're talking a collector. He likes military surplus or vintage firearms, such. Yep. He likes modern guns. Uh, someone who's into NFA gets into suppressors, like yep. sh shooting in their backyard. Someone who hunts. Someone who hunts. Someone who reloads. Someone who gets that that sense of fulfillment on on getting that two inch group down to an inch or less in, in their favorite firearm because they went through a hand loading process and did a ladder test yep. and all that. I mean, that that's kind of what it's all about. I mean, you got to look at the whole the whole gamut. You know? Right, and I think if you look at that entire picture, you'll see that a firearm is just a tool mm. and the people that own firearms they they just like to employ those tools in a way that that fits their lifestyle mm -hmm. I, I mean i hate to think of it that way to some degree though because okay so a thief buys a gun because he wants to go rob somebody well yeah but that's not that's not the majority of gun owners though mm. you can't punish every single gun owner because of a few bad apples in the batch I mean, the majority of people that seek out this type of stuff, they just enjoy it as a hobby, as a way of life, um, you know, to hunt, to protect themselves, to pass down those, those traditions down to their family members, mm -hmm. and just be peaceful members of society. That really mm -hmm. is the basic premise of it all. Now, also, you know, um, you know, hold a big stick, but be quiet about it, you know. That's that kind right. Of thing. Walk tall, carry a big stick, yep. walk quiet. Well, guys, thank you for watching this video. I know it's a little bit on the long side, but hopefully these points are well driven home. If you've watched this video and you're a fan of the channel and you've got a buddy who's on the fence about buying a gun, like maybe you just can't quite get it through to him, send him this video. That's what I want this video to be. Something that you can pass off to somebody. Maybe you've been convinced mm -hmm. through, from this video that you need to consider owning a firearm. Pass this video on to the next person that might need that bit of encouragement from somebody from a couple of guys who are really experienced in this realm, pass this along, and then maybe when they go, you know what, they're right, I'm gonna buy a gun, mm -hmm. they'll pass it along. So I want this video to be something that gets passed along in the same way that we pass along our heritage down to our family members. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to pass my reasoning for being a gun owner down to the people out there in the internet world that will do with it what they will. Yep. And hopefully it'll be, uh, ultimately, create more responsible firearms owners as a result. That's yeah, my goal. That is the goal. All right. Well, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Many more videos on the way. More five guns, more 10 guns, uh, <laughs> more gun gripes, firearms facts, range reviews. We do it all. So mm -hmm. if you're you know, just now tuning in this channel, consider subscribing. Uh, we got a lot going on. We have fun with it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Take care, guys.